So now we'll be talking about unconscious bias in our cultural community. So thinking about how we internalize on the individual level these biases against ourselves and how they shape our own narratives. So we've talked about our cultural spaces and identities that we occupy, but a follow-up question. How do these cultural identities inform our biases against ourselves? I think it's again an assumption that when we meet someone um, who is similar to us, maybe culturally, even um, like subculturally, like if we're in one part of India, and stuff, it's already assumed that, oh, yeah, they're, you know, the go-getters or if their parents are kind of influencing what, what it is that they're asking and all of that. So it automatically just makes us filter down and assume what it is that this person is coming to us and discussing in whichever way. Right. So like the cultural stereotypes that we've yeah. we've gotten from our own experiences living in our communities have influenced how we perceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I will share again a personal anecdote. Um, so back in 2015, I was given the opportunity to live in Banfield, which is this tiny little town on the west coast of Vancouver Island. Um, it is. So tiny, it is 150 people. There was a, there is a marine science station on there, so it was the Banfield Marine Sciences Center, and I had the opportunity to work there as their librarian, their marine science librarian, um, and that meant that I would have to move to this tiny little town all by myself uh, in a place that I've never been before. Somehow make the trek across the island um, into BC and work as a science librarian for a community that I had never engaged with before. And I was terrified. I had never really thought about doing this. I had, and the, the thoughts in my head were very much around, well, Pakistani Muslim girls don't do this. They don't leave their families. They don't travel across the country. They don't uh, jump on a ship and, and go and live by themselves for a few months at a time in this rural community that they've never been to before. That's just not what's done. Um, and I thought about this because the thing that was influencing me most in this decision was my culture. So culture is like breathing. It's invisible and it's reinforced constantly and it's also unconscious. And it's also something that is being shared by members of our community. It is reinforced and policed by members of our community. And finally, culture is something that we occupy in different contexts. That we're not just occupying one cultural category, but multiple ones. So in this decision-making process, when I was trying to figure out if I wanted to move to Banfield, if I wanted to take this job, I was thinking as a Pakistani Muslim girl, that should I be doing this? Is this an accessible way of life for me? Um, and while I was making this decision, I came across this economist uh, report for the British Council, and it's called Defined by Absence, Women and Research in South Asia. And it makes, and it looks at the case of the missing female researcher. So it's looking at why are these, these women who are performing well at the undergraduate level disappearing from research when they get to the graduate or professional environments. Um, and this came up on my radar and I read through it and I realized that what I was experiencing was not a systemic, it was not an individual thing, it was a systemic thing. And I needed to approach this as a systemic barrier. So what I did was did a lot of self-reflection. So I interrogated this perception that I had of myself that I wasn't able to go off to Banfield and live by myself for these months and live in this rural community all by myself and do this kind of work. And I thought about where was this perception coming from? and I tried to seek evidence that supported this perception of myself or disproved this perception of myself. And I thought about which culturals, cultures, which values are my actions, my decisions reflecting and reinforcing and why. And finally, through this process, I was able to make informed choices and, make, and change my perception of myself whenever it was appropriate. So after some deep self-reflection, I moved to Banfield. So this is where I worked. This is my library right here. Um, and the view from my library is this beautiful thing right here. And this was my backyard. And I wouldn't have been able to do this if I had let systemic issues, this like cultural issues, influence my decision in this way. That if I had not taken the time to self-reflect, think about what my, where my perception of myself was coming from, I wouldn't have had basically the guts to go for this opportunity.